Hello Star Wars fans, welcome to episode 9 of Journey into Legends. Today we are going to be talking about the Jedi Prince series by Paul and Hollis Davids. Jedi Prince is a series of six junior novels released between 1992 and 1993. These are considered some of the worst Star Wars books ever written, which is why I'm super excited to jump into these. I'm going to read them one by one and review them as I go along and I'll talk about my thoughts on the series as a whole at the end of the video. So without further ado, let's read and review. In the glove of Darth Vader, a villain named Trioculus, the supposed three-eyed son of Palpatine, seeks to take his father's place as the Emperor. The prophets of the dark side prophesies that whoever wears the right-hand glove of Darth Vader is to be named the new leader of the Empire. We follow Luke, C-3PO, R2-D2, and Admiral Akbar from Kessel to Calamari on a mission to stop Trioculus's rise to power. So what did I think of this book? Well, the idea of Palpatine having a three-eyed son is dumb. The idea that the leadership of the Empire is dependent on whoever wears Darth Vader's glove is dumb. The idea that Trioculus isn't actually Palpatine's son and is instead taking the place of Palpatine's real son Triclops is dumb. This book was so incredibly dumb that I ended up having a lot of fun with it. I've decided to give this book a 50%. It's an entertaining read, especially for children, but it's simply 80 pages of bad ideas. Let's move on to the next book. The Lost City of the Jedi continues from where the previous book left off. Trioculus, now in possession of the glove of Darth Vader, meets with the supreme prophet of the dark side, Kadan, to ask for his blessing. He also begins feeling the effects of wearing the glove. Meanwhile, Luke has a dream of a place called the Lost City of the Jedi, a hidden underground city on Yavin 4. In that city lives a boy named Ken, the so-called Jedi Prince. The story concludes with Luke taking Ken on as a pupil and Trioculus escaping with his life once again. So what did I think of this book? Personally, I thought this book was a lot less dumb than the previous one, but this one was less interesting overall. The locations were less interesting, and so was the action. I've decided to give this book a 45%, putting it 5% behind the glove of Darth Vader. Again, these books are not nearly as bad as I expected, but this one I thought was less interesting than the first one. Let's move on to the next book. Zorba the Hutt's Revenge picks up where the previous book left off. Ken is now traveling with Luke, Han is living on Bespin, and Trioculus is still looking for Ken, the titular Jedi Prince. This book introduces a new villain, the father of Jabba the Hutt, Zorba the Hutt. After discovering Jabba's death at the hands of Leia, Zorba sets out to get revenge for his son. Personally, I actually quite enjoyed this book compared to the other two. I thought the inclusion of Zorba the Hutt was a nice change of pace, and I thought he was a decent villain. I really enjoyed his and Trioculus's interactions. I also enjoyed returning to classic locations from the original trilogy, such as Tatooine and Bespin. My favorite part of this book, though, was the ending. Zorba the Hutt and Trioculus butt heads, and Zorba actually triumphs, freezing Trioculus in Carbonite. This book is definitely my favorite of the series thus far, and I've decided to give it a 53%, putting it 3% over the glove of Darth Vader. I'm officially halfway through this series now and I've surprisingly been enjoying it, and not just as a guilty pleasure, but so far, I think they're genuinely fun books, at least for children. I'm excited to continue reading the series, starting with the next book, Mission from Mount Yoda. Mission from Mount Yoda picks up as the supreme prophet of the dark side, Kadan, shares a new prophecy, one that spells doom for the Rebel Alliance. With Trioculus and Carbonite, Kadan stages a coup and attempts to take control of the Empire by killing the vulnerable Trioculus, in which he succeeds. Meanwhile, Luke, 
Han, Leia, and the others assist the planet Dero during a humanitarian crisis, and they discover the mysterious Triclops, who helps them escape the planet but is suspected to be a possible Imperial spy and is placed under arrest. Personally, I enjoyed this book quite a bit. The long-awaited introduction of Triclops was done in an unexpected way. I thought the story of this book was executed better than the previous books, but in my opinion was much more boring. I've decided to give this book a 47%. I thought it was more entertaining than The Lost City of the Jedi, but personally, I had more fun with The Glove of Darth Vader and Zorba the Hutt's Revenge. Now it's time to move on to book 5, Queen of the Empire. Queen of the Empire begins with the Rebel Alliance's unveiling of Project Decoy, a decoy droid of Princess Leia. After an accident with the fake Leia, Han and the crew are forced to bring the Chadrafan scientist Fandar to the medical facility on Chad, where Han decides to pop the question to Leia. The two decide to elope at Hologram Fun World, Lando's new business project. But before they can get married, Zorba the Hutt makes his way to Hologram Fun World and ends up kidnapping Leia. After a confrontation with the Grand Moffs of the Empire, Zorba is taken prisoner, and the Empire discovers Trioculus alive and still in Carbonite. After Trioculus is freed, Zorba the Hutt is thrown into the Great Pit of Carcoon. The book ends with Luke, Han, Lando, and Ken rescuing Leia and the Sarlacc spitting Zorba back out into the desert. I actually enjoyed this book quite a bit. I appreciated the return of Trioculus and his continued rivalry with Zorba the Hutt. I also enjoyed the continued relationship development with Han and Leia. I've decided to give this book a 49%. I still think Zorba the Hutt's Revenge is the best of the series thus far, and personally, I still had more fun with the glove of Darth Vader. Let's move on to the final book in this series, Prophets of the Dark Side. Prophets of the Dark Side picks up right where the previous book left off, with Trioculus wounded from a blast by Princess Leia's decoy droid. Surprisingly, Trioculus dies in the first few pages of this book, which sets the tone for this finale. This book follows Luke and Ken as they go to various planets on a quest to free Triclops from his mind control. From what I've seen, there were supposed to be another three books after this one, so this book ends with a lot of loose ends. We never learn what became of Zorba the Hutt, Triclops, or Kadan, and we never hear about Ken again. Personally, I enjoyed this book quite a lot. I thought it had some really nice moments and reveals, and I thought the plot was handled much better than some others in the series. I've decided to give this one a 52%, putting it behind only Zorba the Hutt's Revenge. Even though it wasn't originally designed to be the ending of this series, I thought it did a neat job of bringing the storyline to an end, while also leaving room for fan interpretation. So here are my closing thoughts about the entire series. I ended up really enjoying this series. Of course, I can admit that these books are atrocious pieces of garbage, hence why I gave them scores in the 40s and 50s, but I had so much fun with these books. They were easy to read, you don't have to take them seriously, and I'm pretty sure they aren't even canon to the Legends timeline, so you can just kick back and enjoy this nonsense for what it is. Nonsense. I definitely recommend these books to those of you who, who have the capability to turn your brain off and have some mindless fun. I hope you guys enjoyed my review. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for my next review where I'll be talking about the Dark Empire Trilogy. See ya.